thank you so much for for joining us here thank today. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, um, we exist on the same YouTube space, yeah. I guess, doing completely different things. But uh, I've watched your videos since uh, 2017, 2018. Yes, yeah, around the media that space, right? So um, when I thought of like introducing you today and like doing my research, so called, you know, everyone's. Uh, Everyone, the natural thing to do is to like go to your accolades and the position. Mm. And so I thought, you know, what would be interesting is I just see how you would like to be introduced. And to, to, to do that, I went to your website. Mm. And this is where I started to notice something really different, which re reaffirmed why I really wanted to ask you so many questions. Okay. You guys do not talk about your achievements in your bio. You guys do not talk about your achievements in your so on your social media platforms. You guys do things so differently. You co-founded Property Lim Brothers. Uh, how many years ago? Um, so I currently run two companies. Oh. I started uh, Property Lim Brothers uh, as a brand uh, yeah. about six years back. Yeah. Yeah. So 2017, 2018, around that time. Then last year we started our realty uh, uh, company. So so basically, uh, these two entities are uh, one is PRB Media, one is PRB Realty. What's yeah. Realty? And Realty is a, is a real estate agency. Oh, yeah. right. So we started our own agency last year. So you have a media agency and a... Yes. Ah, yes. Yeah. Okay. And of course, the, the guys work together yeah. uh, in the same place. Uh, and of course, it's under the brand umbrella Proctolimbras. Wow. Yeah. When I was listening to your interviews, reading the articles that I found that we had in common is that we started working when we were very young. Yes. So yes. I wanted to ask, what was your childhood like? Mm. Can you give us some a little bit of your background and how you grew up? Yeah. Um, I'm the eldest of three. Uh -huh. Um, so I have a, a, a sister, a brother, and uh, of course our age gap, um, one is uh, five, one is eight years old with me. So of course we, we grew up in an in a average family. Mm. Parents are uh, great, great parents. Uh, my dad uh, works as a taxi driver mm. and my mom is a homemaker. Okay. Um, so my childhood um, brought up was uh, always, I think, uh, very family based. My mom cooks uh, every Friday. We have a tradition to to just everybody will just gather. So I think um, dinners and meals are, are what really anchor. Uh, and this is something that I think my, my parents gave me since mm. they were young. Um, when I was growing up, I think um, like I started doing a lot of part time jobs. 13, 14, 15, all the way. I, I did like multiple. But of course, I think this is uh, probably to a lot of people common as well because. Yeah. If uh, I mean from average family, usually when you want something, like for example, if you want to buy a Walkman. Yeah, Walkman. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm this man, so yeah. we are just yeah. a bit apart. So I thought of a Walkman, then this man, right? Then yeah. if I want to buy a computer, um, my parents will always say, okay, then you work for it. Yeah, ah. you work for it. So uh, my first glimpse of um, owning things on my own ability was um, actually I wanted to buy a PC, right? Okay. So I still remember it was like, this brand called Packer Bell, yeah. our sec two. And I've been persuading my dad to buy it because I wanted to play like FIFA. Right, on it. right. And uh, of course, the moment I bought it, but the more he bought it for me and he saw me playing FIFA, he got so so frustrated. Like, you know, you are only buying this PC to play game, right? right. So he thought that it was for work. Okay, so my glimpse was, was it was that uh, he came up with his hard earned saving of $500 to put a deposit for me mm. for the higher purchase. But okay. he told me that, okay, um, to pay for it, you need to work. Ah. So um, I went on a two year, uh, basically working arrangement to deliver Vitagen to my neighborhood. There was a fridge in my home. Yeah. All the Vitagens were there. I have to no carry way. this back as a, as a 14 year old until I was about 14, 15, uh, no, 15, mm. full two years. And uh, that was my first um, so-called kind of exposure to door-to-door -to -door kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Because not oh, only do wow. you have to deliver to the, yeah. the people who have already ordered on a yeah. weekly basis, you also have to uh, knock on new doors. And sell. And sell. And mm. of course, sometimes people will reject you. Yeah. And uh, there, was, there was a bit of pain in the sense that as a young kid, um, to face rejection. Yes. And also like, I dread actually going to do it. Yeah. It's like for consecutive 104 weeks to, wow. you know, to pay for the installment of the PC. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that was my first, uh, I think, exposure to that. And of course, um, I work in 7-Eleven, um, I work in Soul Garden, mm. I work in like Tony Romas, a lot of waitering jobs. Uh, I work in like uh, Merchant Court Hotel and all that. So, so those were the years of growing up. And of course, wow. most of it was done with my friends. Mm. And, um, some of my friends don't really need to work, but it's just really for the exposure. But yeah. for me, it's like, okay, I need to like 
have my own ability to yeah. to save money and buy stuff. So wow. I think for my my formative years, uh, quite a fair bit of all these kind of experiences. Uh, but I realized probably that was because of a constant language that uh, my parents always gave us mm. in the sense that money is not enough. Mm. Yeah. So my, my parents always say like, uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I think mm. that that grew me to be more independent yeah, through yeah, time. Yeah. So so that was that was uh, my my rough uh, formative years. And I wanted to pick out the point of like the rejection part. Mm. Now when you look back, yeah. do you feel like that really sort of was your training ground for sales where you sort of have to develop a bit of a thick skin, mm. uh, resilience and uh, ability to be like, okay, I'm going to try and sell this phytogen to the next door. Yeah, yeah. Was it definitely, like, definitely. Yeah. Um, so on top of that, uh, so of course, uh, it was two things. One is that I have to do it in the evening when people come home. Yeah. Because usually in the day, there's nobody at home. Right. So um, that was the uh, first set of training. Yeah. That I have to do it when my friends are playing or watching shows yeah. at night. Yeah, yeah. Um, second thing was, of course, I think that rejection formulated me to be a little bit more thick-skinned. Mm, yeah. mm. Uh, there was another form of exposure was that um, the, the other side of door-to-door -door sales that I did was uh, really going door-to-door -to, -door to sell Christmas cards. Oh. Yeah, so... Wow, um, dude, you've really done it all there. Eh? Uh, I, 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 I believe there are people who have done more jobs, la, but wow. this was some of the things that yeah. I had tried before when yeah. I was very young. No, I feel like I got nothing to complain about. Because <laughs> I, I did F&B and, and I was like, I cannot do this. Right. So I went to go and find something else. When I read your story, the next sort of phase went mm. into, you know, after school, you went to work as a prison officer. Mm. Is that right? Yeah. And the one question I have is why? That choice back then, I would say it was... Um, so, so there were a series of events that mm. happened, right? So um, all the years I mean passed into my JC days and all that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I didn't do well for my JC, right? Oh, okay. So I didn't do well. I got really a super lousy grade. I then went into uh, banking finance at SIM. SIM back then was like a private degree, easy to get in. Mm -hmm. And uh, similarly, the whole thing repeated again because uh, I need to get a school fees. Oh my yeah. gosh, yeah. So um, it was two combination. Uh, one is uh, my parents borrowed from my auntie mm. and I have to pay her back by installment. Mm. So I started taking students for tuition. Mm. Right? Then, um, yeah, I read you had at one point 10 yeah. students. Yeah. Yeah, 10, 10 students. So usually after school, I rush, rush off, uh, run to places to teach at their homes and stuff like that. So it was like for a good two years, it got me really burned out. Mm, and mm. Uh, coincidentally, during that new season, after my second year of studies, um, I got into a relationship mm. and um, with um, cur my current spouse. Mm. And yeah, so that's how I knew my wife uh, back then. We reconnected. And um, we decided to um, start a family. Yeah, so, so it was a combination of events. Firstly is that uh, into my third year, I need to find a way to get the school fees done. Yeah. Secondly is also, I just don't know why at that age. Yeah. Um, probably it's because of that brought up from mm -hmm. my family that, you know, um, sometimes things were not enough. Yeah. I'm independent. Mm -hmm. I always have this inkling in my heart that I want to start a family ASAP. Oh. Yeah, so I want to be independent. And yeah. of course, um, we, we got very serious in our relationship. And then uh, we made a joint decision that, okay, maybe let me go and find a stable career mm. just for a short stint, mm. maybe for two, three years. Yeah. So I started exploring. Yeah. And then I decided that, hey, maybe let me just try a, a government service, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah. with A levels, I can get in uh, pretty easily went through training and that was how there was a, this three year thing. So I would say that it, was, it wasn't it was a dream job. It was mm. mainly like um, a stage that I yeah. needed like a pivot. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it turned out to be a great experience because yeah. that three years, uh, it molded me even further. Oh, okay. Yeah. How so, how so? No, because um, it, it actually created a lot more empathy in me. Like mm. um, empathy plus courage in the sense that that three years, firstly, as a prison officer, you need to maintain discipline. Mm. You need to have uh, authority. Yeah. But at the same time, you also need to uh, connect with right. um, the, the inmates. Yes, yeah, yes. Because you, you will be in charge of a group of inmates. Yeah. You need to take care of their welfare. Yeah. 
they need to write letters, mm. you need to talk to them, interview them and stuff like that. So yeah. I think it created a lot more empathy yeah. in, in that sense. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was how I got into that three years period because just because I want to pay for right. my uni fees and I completed uh, my third year yeah. as a private candidate. Yeah. yeah. In this time, right, I, mm. I mean, because I, I, I really relate. I, I went to, a lot of people ask me why am I in media industry. Mm. I studied psych and I never thought I would continue in this industry, but I needed to pay my school fees. Right. So I needed more than $10 an hour and like hosting helped me to get more than $10 an hour wow. to pay for my SIM school fees also. Mm. But at the same time, right, I tell you like, it was so tough eh. I don't know about you, but I really struggled with like, wow, managing. I remember I'd be like shooting until like midnight and then the next day is my exam. That kind of work, that kind of grit that the the the, the situation demanded for, mm. for work and school and, and all of that. Like, was it, like, I think you mentioned just now you burn out a little bit. What was that like for you mentally during that? That period of uh, studies, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the, a bit of that same feeling came back. It's like, you know, uh, university is a, pl is, a, is a period that, you know, when you meet your uni friends, they will go out and party, yeah, yeah, play, yeah. right? They'll meet after school, yeah. go for makan and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. usually I need to rush off. Yeah. So um, it was also like, my friends were thinking like, this guy is crazy, man. He's a, he got 10 tuition kids. Yeah. Uh, sometimes he can't join us for stuff. He can't stay back for projects. I try my best to join them in the evening and stuff like that. But um, it was like, the balancing law, having to build my network of friends, yeah. studying, and at the same time, like the 10 students to pay for the fees and stuff like that. But how did you feel? Um, I that feel. Time? Uh, or no time to even feel? I feel tired at times, lah. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it was quite tiring. And I think it all accumulated to this sense that, hey, when can I ever get a breakthrough? Yeah. Right. But um, I think. At some point, I also feel that, hey, I have certain level of earning power. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's like that form of autonomy yeah, yeah. that I sort of like enjoy as well. Yeah. yeah. In the, when you were serving as a prison officer, yeah. that's where you met Adrian, right? Yeah. And I'm guessing the move to, or the prospect of property was also out of that necessity to earn money, is it? Mm, so, um, Back then, as a, as a uh, prison officer, we had a bond of two years, mm. 10 plus training. And I, uh, I left at about the three year mark. Uh, so I met Adrian during the three months training camp. Mm. We were in the same training batch. We were posted to the same uh, prison to, to serve as well. Right. Yeah, and um, it was during one instance that uh, I met up with a friend who was in the real estate industry. Right. And uh, back then I was shocked because um, mm. When I told him how much was he like earning, yeah, right. So it's, he told me he grossed about uh, ten to fifteen thousand a month. Yeah. So back then it was like in the year twenty oh six period. Now I just felt, like, hey, wow, that's drastically different. Mm. And um, I already had planned to leave because uh, mm. I had a degree at banking finance right. and can uh, quite easily get a job as a relationship manager in yeah. some of the banks to right, start right. off in the sales route. Right? Yeah. Um, then uh, I already had my first child. I have a home, I'm married. So I was just thinking, um, what should I do really to, to be able to um, increase my level of uh, income for the family? Mm. Yeah. So back then it was just right, really thinking about options because uh, my wife also sacrificed to work part-time mm. so that she can be at home with, with my, my child. Yeah. So back then it was purely income. Mm. Yeah, it was purely about finding the next work at the age of 26 yeah, to, to find a breakthrough. Yeah. So I decided to try the realty route. Right. Yeah, so um, I joined my friend and then started. Then I find that I really like it because yeah. um, in terms of the ability to do sales, mm. I find that I have you know, such um, a very exciting experience, like um, talking to people about their homes. Yeah. And I also love the fact that, you know, I can go inside a property to talk about the product yeah, yeah. when I'm inside the, the product. Yeah. yeah so, so it's quite a different experience. Yeah. yeah so I decided to, to just dabble into it. So back then it was just purely for income decision. Right. Yeah. So when you started and then when you started, like maybe like as you were growing, did you do well? Did you make did you sort of do what you set out to, to do, achieve what you set out to achieve? For six months, actually, I, I earned like a year's income if I were to be a prison officer. So I just realized oh. that there's like an accelerated path. Yeah. 
uh, first, second, third, fourth year uh, did well. Yeah. Um, basically, me and my partner Adrian mm. were usually the, the top producers in the company. Wow. As a, as a young young realtor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, spend long hours. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of long hours. Usually, we're in the office by nine. Reach home at about eleven. Between twenty six to thirty, that you know, I was always like chonging. Yeah. For this, for this like new career. So, yeah. um, that period was actually one of the most like ambitious part of of my my before thirty kind of kind of phase. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you did you have the strike while the iron talk kind of? Um, Actually, mentality. I would say that uh, of course that will then flow into the second part of my season uh, mm-hmm. But that that season was actually a very unhealthy season. The the reason was because my viewpoint is really like I want to earn as much money as I can. Yeah. I have this like insatiable appetite to like want to prove to the world. From that period, I would say that that formative years as a realtor it was quite unhealthy because firstly. Um, I think back then the industry was quite cowboy. Uh, there was no council like now, yeah. right? So government didn't come in yet. Yeah. So back then, uh, in terms of things that we learned, oh. um, it was not healthy. Right. Yeah. Um, in terms of dealings, practices, yeah. and values, right? values, right. and my mindset is really like just to earn money, just right. to close the next deal, yeah. and just to prove. Um, just to buy the next watch, yeah, yeah, yeah. just to change car, yeah. um, just to tell people that you know I'm earning well, yeah. doing well, and all that. So I think that first four to five years uh, was not a very healthy period of my life. Yeah. yeah, and then in that time, in a sense, you you said I don't really know what I'm doing it for except to chase the next success, right? Mm. But you were just going, 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 and I imagine one success sort of fueled the other, right? Mm. To, to like, uh, let me keep going at this. Yeah. Um, uh, did you ever like stop and go like, eh, what am I doing this for? Why are we doing things this way? Or it was just, oh, think it seems to be working, so I'm gonna keep going with it. Um, so it was until like, uh, when I was 30 years old, uh-huh. then I start to had a burnout event. Yeah. Yeah, so the burnout event was like, um, I started to fear my phone ringing. Yeah, oh, so there man. was this, this season that uh, I have three kids. Yeah. Um, my wife is stay at home. Then uh, just suddenly for this stretch of probably six to nine months, um, I just started questioning a lot of things. Yeah, so I was like burnt out. Um, then I was just always like trying to, uh, as, as you say, close the next deal, right? But I started questioning like, hey, why am I doing this for? Right. Like, um, why am I always wanting to like prove to somebody? Yeah, and who is this person that I'm wanting to yeah. prove to? Yeah. And um, what's the meaning of like all this, yeah. right? And also like, I started to question a little bit like, what's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of mm. work? Why am I earning things to pay bills? Right. right? Yeah, so <laughs> well, I was like, quite existential. Eh? Yeah, quite yeah. existential. So, but by this time you mm. were co- financially comfortable. You were okay. I was okay. I Not was in okay. Leg, right? Not in uh, leg. Okay. Okay. Comfortable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like closing deals every month. Yeah. But um, not very healthy in my relationship with my wife because uh, um, I didn't allocate time. Yeah. To spend with uh, my children. Mm to spend at home. Mm. Uh, I was physically there, mm. but my soul is not there. Mm. Yeah, so usually, uh, the life of a realtor, sometimes it can get very unhealthy in the sense that if you have meals with your friends, yeah. but, or, or meals with your kids and family, but when the phone ring, you, you do it immediately. To, yeah. right? You want to negotiate the deal immediately. You always sort of like, so I always sort of like place the deals on top of relationship. Yeah, so, and of course the usual language, lah, my wife would say that, um, are you able to like set aside some time? But mm. my usual language is like, I'm doing this for the family, mm. you know, I need to earn more money for the family. Mm. So it was this very unhealthy kind of yeah. uh, thing that, that causes some strains in our relationship as well back then. Uh, I try to do my date nights with my wife on uh, Monday night. Oh, that's nice. Uh, but recently there's some changes, uh, so I'm trying to do on like Saturday night. Wait, you have scheduled date nights? Yeah, date nights. So I learned it from like one of the books as well, uh, because it was during that that recalibration, yeah. right? So uh, I find that it's very useful. Yeah. So, okay, so I'm going to ask you the position of yeah. single, uh, single, no kids, to somebody who is married, 
with kids, with okay. four kids. Yes. Yeah. So to me, right, this I'm looking over at your island going. This is very scary. Right. How do you make it work? Plus, you have your business. Mm. So now I'm learning. One thing is scheduled in. <laughs> yeah. My uh, schedule one, I cannot be. Uh, preferably to be consistent because, um, I think like consistency is something that allows your important people to know that you are a bit more predictable. Mm. Yeah, so at least every week there's like one touch point. Yeah. So they know that okay, this is really you block out, uh, and no matter what happens, yeah, you will not compromise on this date. Uh. Yeah. So it's like uh, you really have to like, like put on an armor for this time period, lah. Right, right. Yeah. And you like block it out, lah. Yeah. To know. You like Korean barbecue? I like Korean barbecue. Mm-hmm. I, I I like like, like food that we can drag the makan. <laughs> yeah. So this like steamboat and all this kind of stuff. This guy, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Compared like, to like, you know, you just serve, then we complete. Yeah. yeah. So you like the the social aspect of it. Yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same, same. What about yourself? Same. And then I end up eating so much. Right. Yeah. So this one, this place is cool because it's smokeless. So immediately you see, right? They don't have that. So this is the high tech, high tech version. Awesome, awesome. It's good, it's good. You guys married yeah. when you were really young, is it? Really young. How, how young are we talking? Uh, 2003. Okay. We got together. Okay. Uh, ten about ten months later, we got married. No way. Yeah. So it's like two zero two five first quarter. Ten months. Ten months. Ten months. Were your yeah. parents like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Ah. Yeah, they were like, uh, "Are are you guys sure?" Like, because back then both our bank accounts was like, I don't know, five hundred dollars or something. It's like, well, you are a man of uh, yeah. you are a man of courage. Yeah, that that was why. Um, I went to sign on as a prison officer just to have a stable income. Then we can apply for HDB resale, mm. get a grant. Because, but that was my first experience that technically we don't need any down payment. Mm. We can just get a house because it's fully covered by the grant. Right, right. So we, we got a resale property. Then our banks only got five hundred bucks only. So it's like we, we just we just take, and, and the house was like uh, there was nothing, not much furnitures, and then we just slowly buy with like installments. Just slowly buy, like slowly buy a What's TV. Your, what was so, your first furniture? Just like a, maybe a sofa, dining table, then the rest and, and the bed lah. So slowly built. Slowly just built, yeah. Wow. So that, that was like how, how we, we hustled lah. And your wife was like, uh, she she went in during, knowing what the situation was. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, I think we enjoyed the process because like, mm. um, sometimes we'll chat about this thing because both of us has never ever talked about like uh, money or like finances. Usually, I mean, last time when I was anxious, I was the one who worried about it. But she will never question me. She will. She will not ask me about. She will not stress me about anything. I think one good habit we had was that from the start we told each other we we'll just show hand. Wow. And back then we only got five hundred dollars, ma. So, oh, so, so we started with nothing. <laughs> we started with nothing. There's nothing to show, right? <laughs> so we, we came up with a concept that okay, all our salary will go to this one account. There's no. This before marriage. Yeah, this before marriage. Oh, so, okay. so we we set this thing that uh, we set two disciplines like One okay, two two commitment. One is that we'll never talk about divorce. Number two is that we will have a shared account, so that we don't have private account. We don't ever need to think about this thing. We just show her, just just put everything inside. Okay, so yeah. don't talk about divorce. <laughs> shared account, show her. Yeah, I mean that was what worked for us, lah. Yeah. Because everybody had their yeah. own different style. I love that though because, mm. like, you know, sometimes in the heat of an argument, uh, the moment you bring that thing up, it's really like, whoa! Don't let like let's not even go there, or why are we even going there? I imagine, lah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But of course, um, I mean, I have certain friends that have like okay, uh, electric bills. 50-50, internet bills 50, or like, okay, you take out in- internet, I take out this, you take out this, but I felt that um, then we will always have to have that mental energy to manage that part. Uh, yeah, so why don't, for us, join. One more, yeah, just join, everything build up from there. Save the admin of the Yeah, home. then we just trust each other, lor. so. Then the wedding, how? Because wedding, isn't it, like? Wedding wow. was literally the ang bao. Wait, or you're just cow the ang bao, ah? So it was really like um, so deposit borrow from my mother in law. End of the day. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I need to stop you there. Yeah. 
That must have been hard. Yeah, because but uh, but we, we we still earn money from the wedding that time. We hey, like nice. Three thousand dollars or something. Hey, nice. Yeah. So no. so so back then was like I mean weddings were the the banquet was not expensive lah like, during my days, but literally was really using the angpao, ever like after everybody cross. leave. Yeah, then Count. just open everything. Settle the bill. Hey, sometimes you really never know people's situation, right? Why they make all these jokes that say, well, you go in the room, I should wake up on power first. Because really, it's, yeah. it's a real thing. Yeah. When you say the, f- the fear of the phone ringing, right? Mm. I also related with that in my previous company. And that's when I knew things were getting bad. Okay. How, how was it for you? Like, did, did you like dread and dread this sort of momentum you're in, but you just had to get the job done anyway? Or... How, yeah. yeah, what was it for you? Uh, it started to a point that I was dreading it. Right. Yeah. And uh, that also caused all the questions that I started to have. Right, yeah. right. So I went to like a, a exploration stage. Okay. Yeah. Then yeah. I started questioning. I even went to my mom and asked my mom like, Hey, um, mommy, I suppose you're son war. So it was like all this ex- ex- oh, existential. <laughs> so, so she says that, I mean, she was very funny. She said, oh, Right. Yeah, so, she, right. so she, she just give you a very simple answer. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was quite quite cute, like, it's quite funny. And um, so I started questioning uh, like meaning of life and all that. And of course that brought me to a journey to explore my faith. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it Is that me, how you dealt with the, the burnout? Um, that was uh, of course the key turning point. Right, right. Mm, because um, back then on top of uh, trying to chase for success and money, uh, through that period, I also realized that actually I was trying to prove to my dad. Oh. Yeah. So so I had like an inner vow that wow. that I wanted to prove to my dad to to prove to him that I can make it. But actually, you know, after so many years, uh, so so basically, I had a I had a session with him in the end that what? we clarified, uh, talked things out, wow, uh, cried and all kind of, all this kind of stuff. And of course, then I realized that actually to him, that was like so many years back that. Probably he said some hurtful words, but he didn't mean it like. Um, I I think oh. as the stress of a parent, yeah, um, yeah. bring up three kids as a taxi driver, all three kids went to university. Yeah, uh, it's not easy for them. Uh. But there were times during stress that probably they have said some, said some hurtful things, and of course the, all these words get locked yes, in yes. the children's heart, right? Yeah, yeah. So that became like a. I call it an inner vow la, that that was lodged in my heart, and the I vow think, to prove him yes, wrong. Yes, yes. And of course, if I think back now, a lot of things that I was doing was actually trying to prove him wrong. Wow. Yeah, so like, I was also very superstitious. Mm. Yeah, so um, I was so superstitious to a point that a lot of my decisions back then in my late 20s and early 30s uh, were done out of fear. Mm. Yeah, so I have like multiple feng shui masters. Okay. I have... Um, this is while I you are a property agent? Yes. Ah, yeah. okay. So I spent uh, a lot of money on oh. all this like consultation, uh, Jomancy and all that, dates. Um, during that period, I was also like dabbling with this, like why am I um, also believing in all these things, mm. right? And uh, what was the main intent? And I think the main intent back then was really like, maybe when I follow all these rules, uh, I can earn more money. Uh, my kids will be healthy so that I can be more wealthy to prove to my dad. Yeah, so wow. so it could be like a link. I, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, so so that was that, that journey until about age 31, 32. Wow. Yeah. During this time, I also read that um, you made a business mistake that brought you guys, wiped you guys out to zero. Mm. Was it this time? Yeah, so um, it was one year after I... Um, Follow my faith, right, as a Christian. Okay. Yeah, so it was one year after that. So I became a Christian at age uh, 31. Mm. Uh, of course, that was the, the key pivot turning point that um, I no longer become superstitious. Um, I start to uh, understand more about the purpose, meaning of life. What, what about, I mean, there's so many in your exploration stage. Mm. What, what was it about Christianity that sort of landed it for you? Yeah, so. Um, the thing that landed it for me was that um, Christianity is a relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it is a reverse in the sense that because I, I used to be of a different religion. Yeah. Um, the key pivotal difference that I came to understand was that 
uh, is a free gift from God. That mm. means salvation, salvation is a free gift. That means we don't have to earn our way to heaven. Yeah. Uh, and it's not because of works. Yeah. It's not because of like, I need to accumulate good yeah. deeds. Yeah. Then I can qualify to go to heaven. Yeah. It's, it's really about, because it's a free gift from God, yeah. that's why I want to do good deeds. Right. Yeah, so it's like it's a, a free- reverse. Yeah. Mm. So that was what uh, was, uh, I think, the, the main transformative thing for me. Mm. Uh, but it was after one year that, of course, I made a business mistake. I believe it was like um, a season that God will want to like um, bring us to a level of humility. Sure. Yeah. So uh, it was also because of the fact that that first four to six years of my rest uh. journey, uh, we're not doing things really the yeah. right way yeah. in the sense that our mindset was always looking for uh, money, mm. tend to choose deals, yeah. like this deal can earn me how much, yeah. that deal is very small, I don't want to do. Oh. Yeah, so actually from the humbling experience, then it was the kickstart of yeah. the, the word integrity. Right? Yeah. So it's really wow. like, yeah, because I still remember back then it's not only our corporate account, it was the personal account that was like depleted to zero because of the business mistake. Yeah, so um, I still remember that that there was a particular day that my wife uh, prayed for me and because we had to restart from zero naturally and at age 32, it is considered like a failure. Lah, yeah. Because it, you're like six years in real estate, right. all your friends are doing well, yeah. but we have to start from scratch. Yeah, so uh, it was a really like a drought season for the next four years. Do you remember the day where you had to really like, the day it went to zero? I remember, yeah. What, what was that like? The feeling was, was sad lah, it was sad. Yeah, so the feeling was like, um, really like, you know, why, the, why does this happen to us? And, uh, but I think when I went through that after about four years, then when we look back, um, I think it was a needful journey. Mm. Yeah, because if I were to continue with mm. my same old mindset, um, right. probably I think it will, it will not end up well. Lah. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was also that season that um, me and Adrian, we decided that we will dedicate our business to God. Mm. Yeah, and that's why we came up with the tagline, real estate with integrity. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we went through, we, we, we then started on like the next four years just doing, I, w- I would say random stuff. I would say that we just do whatever uh, deals come our way. Uh, we went back to do like even room rentals. Uh. Yeah, so, and then we started to just think about, okay, how can we um, just do well in the work, yeah. help people, yeah. uh, look at families as families, mm. Um, mm. try to put ourselves in their shoes. Like, yeah. you know, they save up so much for the first set of down payment. Yeah, yeah if this were to be my down payment, how am I going to make a decision? Yeah. Right. So I, we, we try to look at people as families la, from, mm. from there onwards. Mm. And how long did it take for you to get back, sort of get back on your feet? Again? It took about four years. Four years? Mm. Four and years. What's the four years look like, like that? La? Any sort of like a revamp of your core values mm. and then sort of just putting your head down and working again, working the ground again? Yeah, uh, then um, we, it, it's sort of like a recalibration stage. We, I think we were actually happier. Oh, wow. Because we, we know that, you know, we're not chasing things to prove to people. Yeah. Yeah, so we just want to do our work uh, and then just become better. So yeah. we, I think we became more innovative as well. Uh, like in terms of like- uh, How you do the work. Marketing, yeah. lead generation. Yeah. Uh, and I think that four years also gave me a lot of mind space. Mm. Uh, so that four years was the period that I started to read uh, tremendously. I read a lot, mm. consume a lot of content. Mm. Uh, it was also the season that I started to look at how other countries market yeah. their properties. Yeah. yeah. So so that four years was the actually the best four years that I had. Wow. Yeah, because it was the period that I had a lot of time. I love yeah. that. I expected it to be the most stressed, but yeah, it's, zero, it's the best four years. But it became the best. It was the best four years. There, there was a, towards the last part of that four year, one day, my wife came to me and said that, um, hey, darling, you're in the house. Is it not business? Is it not doing anything? So I told her that, uh, I just got this feeling that some, maybe something big is coming. Yeah, so, so I said that, 
It's okay lah. We we just be patient now. Yeah. Yeah. So so that was actually that four years was great lah. Yeah. Was, was fantastic. I love that. Yeah. Because it's unexpected. Unexpected. Uh, we feel actually quite at peace. Yeah. Um, no burden. Awesome. We know that. There were some deals that we chose not to do also if wow. it doesn't align with the values. So learning to say no. Yeah, learning to say no. Yeah. Uh, because maybe some deals were a little bit more shady, so mm. we we didn't want to do it. So, so I think that was the part that it also starts to build our character a little bit more. Yeah, I I read this thing that really really um sort of blew my mind. I mean, in a sense, most people would know that you, uh, sort of were the first you know to do the home tours and to sell the home. Mm. But what was Very um, interesting to me about that was I read that the person who helped you film, uh, you helped him start a production house. Oh yeah, so um, back then actually I started with uh, getting one of my friend uh. to help me to film. Then uh, we just realized that firstly, if I want to grow uh, PLB to be a brand. Mm. Uh, it might be better to have our own in-house team. Mm. Yeah. So um, and also back then, my friend he was in the transition stage. So I said that okay, since we've already done three videos, why don't at the same time we also start another company? Ah. Yeah. To do um, the more so-called like templatized home tours for other realtors. For yeah. other, realtors. other realtors. So so back then, my friends were saying that you're crazy. You're creating competition for yourself. Yeah. But what was your yeah? What's your yeah? So um, actually, my main idea is very simple. Uh, is like. Eventually, when we do this, people will also do, right? So um, why not at the same time we just do a parallel? Um, I start PLB Media. Technically, here I can also like help my friend to start something together with me. Then at the same time, it's also something that we can explore together, right? So back then, uh, I also have a couple of my associates in my division. So I was still in the, in another realty back then. Uh, they also wanted to try out. Right. Yeah, so I was thinking, okay, this can potentially also benefit the industry. So just do it. so so my mindset is just like, just do it, like I mean, don't don't think about so much. Don't think about whether is it competition or not competition because every human being is different in the video. Yeah, yeah. Oh, be, people can film homes, but you speak differently, you talk differently, yeah. you analyze differently, yeah. and and there's so many ways to differentiate. Yeah, yeah. So that was my thought process. You mentioned that. Um, so I asked. I ask you like, hey, what are you doing? And then you're like, okay, management role, mm. and you do not sell anymore, mm. which means you told me that you draw a fixed income from your yeah. company, yeah. which blew my mind. Like when I read up the accolades outside of the website, right. they're like million dollar realtor for this year, this mm. year, like those awards lah. So those are other people say one, which I'm like, oh yeah. So I'm sure he's a he's obviously a great uh, realtor. I've no doubt about it. Plus, with all the media push, right, and confirm everyone want you to sell their house if you are selling. Mm. So when I found out that you are just not say just in management, but then mm. you have left, you've stopped selling. Yeah, in 2021. Why? Why did you do that? Yeah, so 2021 was the year that uh, we decided that um, we want to achieve two things. Number one is we really want to grow our people and the company. Uh huh. Um, so that means we have to spend a bit more time to build up leaders, build up. Our teammates build out the structure, process, system. Um, secondly, is that we didn't want our sales consultants, which are our full-time realtors. We d- we didn't want them to feel that you know we are like a bit like their competitors in the mm. sense that we want to eliminate the the possibility of any mindset of misunderstanding that wow. uh, we keep big deals to ourselves. Ayo. Yeah. So. Uh, of course, we can still do that. They didn't request us to step out from sales. Yeah. Nobody ever requested that. I yeah. think they, they fully trust and respect us. But I think we just want to make sure that okay, our guys know that all the deals will be handled by them. If there are big deals, uh, senior consultants will handle. So so we decided to take a step back. Uh, we draw a fixed salary. Then we we manage the ops lah as as the C suite team lah. Quite mind blowing. Was it hard to because you do have to in a sense part with all the potential big deals, m- big la. deals, yeah. yeah, and which means directly is income ah, money mm. lah. Mm. Yeah, but um, we knew that if we want to do something like um, yeah. on a scalable level, that it's has nice. more um, I would say has more longevity, long game. Then also. We can build internal trust. Mm. Uh, this has to be a step that we need to take. Okay. So me and my business partner, we we decided that 2021 was the year that we need to step out of, of doing sales directly. Okay. Yeah. 
during this time when you you started like breaking ground, there were a lot of criticisms were there. Uh, there were a lot of opinions. Opinions. Yeah, I think okay. opinions. What, what were some of these opinions? Um, so there were opinions like um, we are very extra. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, why do we want to do this? Right. Uh, we are very like a bit too too. Right. Like uh, what do you want to do? Like so so fluff. You know. Like like. Showcase. Seriously, yeah. yeah. Because uh, it's not the norm. Yeah. But actually, in US, it's very common. Yeah. Already. Yeah. They show the penthouse millions of views. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so all in that. Singapore, we are very used to even that that time. Uh, most of the time, it was like on portals, still on newspaper. Oh wow. And uh, it was like very static, lah. Yeah. Very static. Yeah. Yeah. And every home is so different, lah. Yeah. Right. And I I just feel that. This can actually save everybody a lot of time. Yeah, yeah. It saves yeah. the seller's time. It saves the buyer's time, and it is twenty four seven marketing. Oh yeah, yeah, twenty four seven marketing. Yeah. And it's forever. It's it's forever online. Right? Totally. Yeah. So I think it is fantastic for both buyers and sellers. I love what you did because, like you say, it value added. I mean, beyond beyond the agents, right? Because as a consumer, I I I don't care. It's like not my problem. Mm. You value added so much to the consumer, to the seller, to the buyer, mm. um, and and that that's really cool. You so I wish I had time to go into all the nitty gritty details, right? right? But but right now, so that was when you were how many people? Um, so twenty eighteen was just more like a, I would say, the business model was more like a we call it like a superstar uh, realtor model, meaning that. Uh, me and my partner was the main realtor. Yeah. Then the media team was was like the team that supported us. Yeah. So that was back then, but twenty mm. nineteen uh, was another shift. Okay. Yeah, because that was the time that we started this concept called the inside sales team. Yeah. So I started to build a team of uh, really committed realtors that believe in the vision. Right. That uh, we want to market every home to the fullest potential. Yeah. Then they came in full time. And uh, they started doing things with us together, wow. and then eventually, of course, that that led to twenty twenty two last year. Yeah, and we started our realty. Right. Yeah. So so that was the the beginning of PRB Realty. Yeah. That portion. Yeah. Yeah. So from somebody who is not in the industry, mm. I, I I wonder if you could share what were some of the as you mentioned before a bit more like. Shady or like things that you didn't align with, mm. and then in building your company now, the people that you hired who align with your vision and your values, what did you change? Mm. I know it's very broad and very big, but if you take us through some, some really like practical examples of that, even yeah, yeah. Uh, I think firstly is that um, what we have implemented in terms of change uh, in order to make sure that now we have fifty nine realtors. And uh, if you come to our office, we have like ten core values lah in the office tech lines. Um, but in terms of practices on the ground, yeah, uh, we advocate this thing called screenshot closing. Okay. Yeah, screenshot means that if, let's say, I'm the realtor handling this property for our client, uh, if the, I receive any offers, any offers from buyers, any offers from buyers representatives, um, meaning the buyers have a realtor themselves, we screenshot. Sent to our client. Ah, that means we screenshot the entire to really show you there's message, a real offer, including the contact number. We just send it over with like the timestamps and stuff, so so that it just solves the part about transparency. Love it. Yeah. So that so that our clients will have like full trust in in a, in a sense that they wouldn't be yeah. worried yeah. about whether we are trying to close a deal fast. Yeah. We're trying to close a deal our convenience. Wow. Or we're trying to hide certain offers. Right, so any offers that come in, we we'll just screenshot, send over, and then we'll discuss like uh, how to strategize the negotiation. Is this a good price? Uh, should we go back with a counter offer, or should we take the offer already and things? So, so I think that is the first step. Mm. Uh, secondly, is that naturally after being like sixteen years in the industry, I think I also get a glimpse about the thinking and the mindset of a realtor. Mm. Plus, of course, understanding more about consumers. Firstly, I think realtors are. Um, this is not an easy work, lah. Yeah. Because this is a uh, realtors are naturally self-employed people. Yeah. There's a lot of anxiousness yeah. in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Because realtors are always worried about the next month. Right. Yeah. Whether because the risk is very high. Yes. There's no CPF, no MediSafe, no fixed salary. Yeah. They have to pump in costs. Yeah. Um. And, and you've been there. Yeah. Yeah. So so I think 
uh, because of this level of anxiety and anxiousness, it allows me to have a, a lot more empathy about mm. how a realtor can really do well and add value. But mm. at the same time, also balance out their life yeah. in the sense that um, they are there for important events during their life. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so uh, we yeah. advocate a Sabbath day in our, our company. Every Wednesday is like a, a stipulated off day lah for all the realtors. Oh, oh yeah, because weekends everyone's probably chonging yes. and working hard. Yeah, so so okay. weekends are burned for yeah. a realtor, right? Yeah. Saturday, Sunday, and a lot of them have families, they have kids. Yeah. So um, we also train them how to do time blocking and uh, because of this wow. anxiousness, we created this system called like a buddy system. Okay. So a buddy system is is following the theory of like a younger ox and an older ox being yoked together. Wow. Yeah. So and that's from the Bible, right? Yeah. <laughs> so so being yoked together means that the older ox has more experience. Yes. The younger ox has more energy. Yeah. So usually uh, when a newer realtor comes in, we try to pair them up with deals with the older, uh, more experienced realtors so that they can do deals together. They can cover each other. Wow. If they really need to go for a son's birthday, yes. the other person is there. They need to go for a family event. Yeah. Someone is there to cover. And wow. the client doesn't get neglected, uh, neglected because wow. there's a buddy system. And this is uncommon practice because prior to that, everyone's solo. Yes. Yeah. So we call it the one man show system. But in, in PRB, buddy. They, there's a buddy system and they are supported with a client support team wow. for paperwork. There's like a, a media person that's helping them. So how it's like how did team. they take it? Were they like, hey, this person going to get? Because naturally the money was split, right? Yes. Yes. So yes. How, how did the... Yeah. So it's, it's a lot of large numbers. Lah. So ah. basically, when you have more buddy systems, yeah. more buddy deals, ah. actually you have a higher success rate. Oof. Yeah. So, so it's wow. a different way of thinking. Lah. And this came to you as you were growing and you were thinking from your experience as a realtor. Yeah. Because because I understand yeah. like it can get burned out very easily. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are not sustainable, yeah. you firstly cannot enjoy your work. Yeah. And you cannot enjoy your family as well. Yeah. Yeah. So so there's a lot of calibration that is needed. This is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I so, mean so that's really that's brilliant. No, I mean it was I think like through the years that we went through. Yeah. Then we realized that if we want to build a real tea, mm. we don't want to build it the same way. Yeah. 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 And and I think you it just occurred to me you are a revolutionary on the outside but also on the inside. Your where your home is. Mm. To take care of your, your people in such a way, to to know what the industry practices were like and then to make like real applicable changes that can help them. Mm. And so you implemented all of this. Uh, I imagine now you, you have a young team also. Um, yeah, they are largely, I would say seven, 60, 70% are usually late 20s, uh, uh, early 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, this is really cool. Yeah, so uh, again, one of these practices, uh, again, from somebody from the outside, mm. I see on social media occasionally people buying Facebook ads or having awards night, and it will look like, you know, congrats on your 1 million revenue, your 15, your five figure, six figure commission. And, and I get it, but as a, maybe this one, like someone in the industry can say, but from the outside, mm. it, it, it gives me a feeling of very, like, yeah, it makes me go, like, uh, I was, was the, I, I get celebrating success, mm. but there is this level of like, maybe flashiness that I personally find it hard to relate with it's coming mm. from the way I grew up or, or seeing like the next, you know, the next car or the next branded thing. It, it made me go like, oh, you know, I noticed that's why when I read your, your bio, your company website, you put emphasis not on, on achievements, but you go like, character coach mm. and people will be like what's that title mm. so, so what is a character coach in, in Property Lean Brothers yeah so um, we have the realty team and the media team each team have um, what we call sections uh, each section is, is basically a group of people that uh, so called is served by a character coach okay yeah so a character coach takes care of probably about four to five teammates yeah um, so character coaches are like uh, leaders lah. Yeah. yeah. Basically, so sales team, the character coaches, they're in charge of like um, 
own, holding their own huddles okay. yeah, on a weekly basis. Uh, then uh, checking with the team, uh, being there for them, doing deals with them together, mentoring them. Uh, we wanted to use this name because we want to emphasize mm. um, the importance of like, uh, uh, I th okay, so, so firstly, I think that designation plays a part in our mindset. Yeah, so compared to I calling you like a, a senior director, right? Ah, but, oh, right. Yeah, right. so like character coach is a reminder that Oof. firstly, I'm here to serve. I mean like servant leadership yes. coach. I'm, a, I'm here to coach people. Yeah. And uh, I need to make sure that, you know, in terms of character, I'm here to build people's character as well as my own character. So, so I mean, it's just basically a reminder for all our young leaders. Mm. So um, that's how we, we sort of like have that structure. Yeah. Yeah. And then they will do their own weekly huddles and stuff like that. Amazing. Yeah, even our media team as well. So yeah. there will they'll be character coaches that take care of their own, own set of people. Yeah. yeah. So again, who taught you this? <laughs> uh, actually, you this name, uh, the structure, I think I read it from somewhere in oh, the past. Okay. Um, Everyone, please go and read. That's, I mean, like <laughs> yeah, that, a lot of things was just like that's awesome. Yeah. During the four years, maybe during the four years, oh. yeah. I mean, until today, like, I still love to read a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but the name came from my kids' school. Huh? Yeah. So my 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 kids' secondary school uses this word character code, so I just pluck it from there. So I, I just find that it's, it's so it's so good. Yeah. yeah. So I love that you prioritize and you emphasize on that, mm. not necessarily the other stuff. And again, doing things differently from everybody else. That that's really what struck me. And when I went to your website, as simple as something as simple as your website is, when I look at the agent and the listings, right, you demonstrate what they can value add to me as a consumer, to me as a seller, more than their achievements per se. Mm. It's their ability to bring me that value. And I think that's what is remarkably different. And just by a just not even looking at the portfolio, just by the bio, I was sold. Yeah. Is there something that maybe a challenge you're facing now that you're able to share with to, 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 to give us a sense of, hey, I'm still also working the ground, still struggling, still building? Mm, mm. Um, my first 10 years was as a realtor. Yeah. Last six years was uh, building the business. And uh, of course now, I think one of the challenges is like, um, I have 120 people to take care of. Yeah. How do I, um, firstly, the thing that's always constantly in my mind is that how do I, Firstly, don't let them feel like it's clockwork. Mm, that mm. means they are not like part of a machine. Yeah. Right? Um, so of course, like um, we have like town halls with uh, huddles. I always share them the concept about um, looking at yourself, developing a niche, but at the same time working towards becoming a polymath. Mm. And so a polymath is somebody that, for example, like if you're good at video editing, right? But you need to go deep, but after that, you need to float up and go parallel. Like, you need to master shoot, you need to master motion graphics, you need to master sound, and you need to go parallel in the sense that yeah. you, start to, you start to become a polymath wow. of the whole like media kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that is something that will help them to always create value yeah. for others and themselves. Yeah. Right? So, um, I mean, we, we, are, we are constantly focus and of course sometimes I get worried if let's say um, they don't spend time looking after their health, finances, family, relationship and, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Recently we started this thing whereby uh, they can claim half their gym membership. Yeah, so we just want to like push them but they have to show proof that they sign up for sign up a gym. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Initially, actually, we, we, we implemented that every week you must take two photographs of you are really in the gym. <laughs> but after that, my clinic department said that it's, it's, it, we should go for a trust system. Just yeah. trust them that they'll go. Okay, yeah. So, so we, we did that. Got a limit, no? like the high end gym. <laughs> no, like, uh, I mean, there's a limit. Like, like uh, Usually, they go for like anytime fitness. Right, right, yeah. right. Got it. So, um, yeah, look, that's, that's like taking care of the 120 people. Mm. Uh, then, also, my struggle of like training and identifying uh, the second gen leaders. Yeah, to take care of the people together. But my constant struggle will be that uh, because I have four kids, oh. right? So just last year only, end of the year, I was doing like so many strategic meetings, right? With my team. We had like two rounds of leadership meeting, one round of sales meeting, one round of media retreat. So everything is like full day. So the whole of November, December is like all this full day thing. So many meetings after that as well for implementation of ideas and execution. 
Then I, I, as I was at home one day, then my wife actually came and asked me like, so she, she challenged me this question. She says that you are doing so many milestone planning for your company. Have you thought about doing any milestone planning for your kids or not? Oh. Yeah. So it's like, wow. that, 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 that actually woke me up because it's like, eh? You know, I was doing like all this like work plan seminars, right? For mm. my team, uh, for my customers, mm. but is it that this season, then I went back to start to neglect my family again. So, so I realized that also mm. um, there's different seasons as well. Yeah. And I need to be very intentional. Yeah. Need to be very alert also that yeah. I might sometimes fall back into the, the trap, you know, right. of trying to be like also over ambitious at right. times. Yeah. So I think my wife is always like a good sounding board and then she will always like gently remind me. Yeah. She will challenge me. And uh, I mean, it, I, I think it is great. Lah. Yeah. yeah. For us, our setup is a bit different uh, because when uh, we started to put our kids into mainstream primary school, mm. my first two kids, uh, halfway we actually implemented the homeschooling system. Okay. Yeah, so we pulled them up from okay. school. Why? Um, so we, I mean, we, we, we found out about the homeschooling system from US. Ah, yeah, okay. And then we, we like it. So uh, me and my wife, we make a decision that, okay, why don't we try and homeschool them? Take the PSL as a private candidate, then set one, they will go back to mainstream. Oh. Yeah, so now my first three kids are all in mainstream. My okay. eldest is in JC already. Ah. But um, I think that homeschooling journey was like one of the best years that we had because they, they became so close to each other. Mm. They it's only study about one to two hours a day. Mm. Uh, my wife did a lot of experiential learning with them, mm. like Science Center and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so that I think that, that season was, was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like a different journey. Lah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing we had with them was that we always uh, tell them that uh, if you fail, I'll be happy for you. And the earlier you fail, the better. Whoa. Yeah. Um, in fact, usually most of my kids, before they go for PSA, I would say that if you fail, just repeat. There's nothing wrong. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to follow like you're like worried about you not matching up to the standard timeline. Yeah. Yeah. Because some, some of us will only discover what we really are talented to do later part. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And in, yeah, exactly that. Something that has really impacted me from just this short time with you is that you strike me as a man who takes care of your inner world a lot. And that flows out. As a result, that flows out to everything that you do in your leadership, in your family. Um, I think that as a, as, a, as a man and a leader, it's so important to just be aware of the season. Mm. You, you, talk, you, you reiterate that a lot, being very aware of your season and being mindful of it, being mindful to attend to it, and then showing us the impact, maybe non-verbally, but through just the way you put things into practice. And so I, I think I would like to close with um, just asking you about that driving force for young Melvin, which is your dad's approval, and you mentioning that just now mm. you actually took time to attend to that inner world with him and, and sort of like talk it out. What, mm. how, how was that um, uh, sort of address for you? Mm. Yeah. Um, so actually that was um, during that season of exploration, mm. right? So, so all the questions, the burnout event, I think it all came together for a reason. Um, and uh, what sprouted the conversation was that uh, I actually went for a program. Okay. Yeah, so that was actually before God found me. Oh. Yeah, or, or rather, God saved me. La. So okay. that was before I became a Christian, yeah. before I was baptized. I went for a program. Um, so there were two learning points here. So the program actually is a program to face your childhood. Yeah. Oh, so, man. so. At the end of the program, you're supposed to call your parents. Oh, wow. So when I called my parents, then my parents were like, oh, are you committing suicide or what? Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, like what know, happened? Like, <laughs> yeah, so like call, cry and talk. Then I told, told them about like, you know what? What was the, the thing that I was like having a grudge on, right? So what, what hurt me and all that kind of stuff. So, so, so glad that, you know, we had that conversation. Then they also came for like, there was like a graduation uh, for that course and all that. So it was fantastic because that was like, the very needed thing 
that I need to get a vow out of me, right? And um, it was also the realization that hey, actually, they didn't mean it. Mm. Yeah, and now as a as a dad, I just realized that you know, to be a parent, nobody taught us also how to be a parent. I have to learn things from books, right? Mm, mm. And um, yeah, so so it gave me a deeper empathy on them as well. Now the second thing was that after I went for the program, even after I went through that intensive program of facing my childhood, yeah, facing some of my traumas and stuff like that, but I still realized that. I still cannot find the true meaning of and purpose of life, yeah. So so that was how eventually right. um, I became a. I mean, I got God saved me lah. Yeah. Right? So I think that that season thirty one years old, thirty two years old was one of the 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 most humbling season, but also a lot of self awareness. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of self awareness, a lot of thinking. Yeah. If not. Yeah, maybe I would just be like a machine, no? just mm-hmm. like, you know, mm-hmm. just drifting through life and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so so that was great. Then that four years. Yeah, Com- coming back to, just now you were asking a little bit about, co- just just yesterday only, right? Yesterday I was in the office uh, working on the, my laptop. A client came to meet one of my consultants. Then a client was like, then my consultant brought a client to me. Then we shook hands, introduced. Then a client made a, made a remark, said, hey, Melvin, why, why are you working here? You know, okay, because when we started our office, me and Adrian, we made this rule that all the leaders have no rooms. Mm. Yeah, so even for myself, we have no office. Yeah, so so we work off the dining table. We work, I work beside the video editor, and we just like we just want to be like flexible. Right, so a client was shocked, like, "Hey, why are you working off like this? <laughs> this space here, so and so and so it's been like, yeah. yeah. So where's your where's your room? Where's your CEO office? Yeah. So I I think that was something that I think we have made a right decision, so that our people always feel like connected with us. Yeah. Then at the same time, um, in terms of like having that connection without boundaries, then mm. we can always talk. Uh, we can improve everybody's self awareness. Yeah. We can talk about deeper stuff about life and all these kind of things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Truly, you are you. You really inspire me. Thank you so much for sharing today. Yeah. yeah I yeah. think that the one of the most courageous things for me I've learned is, yeah, the ability to face that inner world uh, and to tend to it, and because I feel like that overflows and affects everything. And I've really seen that so many of your moves on the outside. Were actually just a byproduct of you um, taking care of your your inner space, and that it just overflowed naturally to a lot of things. Because when I talk to you, it just seems like oh, this just makes sense to me. It mm. comes out of this realization, this evaluation, and this makes sense to me. But from the outside, everyone's like, oh, why would he make a move like that? Mm. Yeah, and that 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 shows me to continue to be courageous in my own life to face my own traumas, my own uh, you know. Uh, ways have been brought up by you know, and even in this industry, and to continue to to try and do things differently. Mm. Yeah, it's very inspiring to hear your experience and your journey with that. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. All right. All right. Great. Yay. Thank, thank you. you.